All right, so here I am at my pedal board here. It's just a homemade pedal board that I'm using for all my effects that run into the 5150 100 watt half stack. Um, the pedal board's a mess right now, so I'm glad you can't see a real close up of it, but I will try to go over it and give you a little bit of a rundown of what I'm using here. Um, in no particular order as far as how they're running through the loop, here's the pedals that I'm using. I'm using EVH Wah, EVH Phase 90, the EVH Flanger, uh, the Boss NS2 Noise Suppressor, the Boss RV5 Reverb, Two different, uh, two digital delays, uh, D two Boss DD3s, uh, the Boss Chromatic Tuner, Boss Super Octave, a BBE Sonic Stomp, and the MXR Analog Chorus. Now, I've had some people ask me, uh, you know, how I run my signal chain, how Eddie runs the signal chain, and things like that. In the new guitar world, you can see exactly how he does it. Um, but I've had, you know, some more practical people just asking me how they, how they could run their effects into their rigs whether it's a 5150 or whether it's a Marshall or whether it's a solid state, it doesn't matter what it is, um, but I'm gonna give you a kind of a good workflow of how the pedals go. So, starting off with I had a guitar in hand, I'd run my guitar into my EVH wah. Uh, from the EVH wah, I run to the phaser. I go out from the phaser into the flanger. I piggyback down here into the analog chorus. Then I go to the uh, BBE Sonic Stomp. I skip. I go into my tuner and then from my tuner to my amplifier. And the reason why my tuner in this case is my last stop before the amplifier, that will let me use it as a bypass as well too. So if I'm in tuning mode where I want to just change the guitar and pull the cable out, I'm not going to get a pop, you know, uh, a loud, uh, you know, noise from the amplifier and I can bypass my sound completely. Or like I say, if you're in tuning mode, you're silent. There's nothing worse than tuning on stage and hearing tuning noises. So again, guitar to the wah, wah to the phaser, Phaser to the flanger, flanger out to the chorus, chorus to the BBE sonic stomp, to the tuner, to the front of the amplifier. Through the back of the amplifier, I'm running the noise suppressor, the reverb, and the two delays. Um, the reason why I'm using those for the loop, here's a good experiment. Try taking your delay pedals, or just a delay pedal, run your guitar into the delay pedal and run it to the front of your amplifier. Because there's a gain circuit in the front of the amplifier, um, at, the, at the input I should say, that, dist that delay is going to be magnified immensely. If you had a real quick delay, even if it was like a bop, 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 like that, try putting that to the front of your amplifier and see what that sounds like. It's going to be insane over the top. It's going to, act it's, you'd want to turn your delay pedal off. It sounds horrible. So you want to put it through the loop of the amplifier. In this case, I'm running two of them. Uh, one is more of a, a, a short delay. Uh, I'm going to say somewhere around, it's hard to tell exactly where I've got them set, but somewhere around uh, 200 and some odd milliseconds, say 250. And then the longer one is more upwards of probably 350. Uh, there are some times where I'll run both those delays in conjunction at the same time and you get a nice kind of ping pong, even though it's not a stereo setup by any means, you get a bit of a nice ping pong, real nice ambiance. And you can even do that without even using the reverb pedal, just to delay pedal sound nice. Uh, the Boss Reverb, I've got a couple different settings I like on that. Unfortunately, you have to physically change the knobs every time. Um, but, you know, it's not like a preset, but I've got one I'll use if I'm going to try to try and play Eruption, which I still can't play right. But if I want to try and emulate that sound, I've got a really, really wet reverb. And then I've just got a normal reverb, more of a, uh, just a nice room ambiance, a, some kind of a plate. Um, and then the noise suppressor, I leave at the last section of the loop, in the loop, because what you want, you don't want to put noise before the delay pedals, or a noise gate, I should say, because what that's going to do is whatever uh, delay level you have, it's going to cut back on the repeats and, and the strength of it. So you want to put it at the end of it. If the delay pedals have any noise that they've caused any gain, whatever, it'll take some of that noise out as well too. Now, even that being said, you're still going to want to play with your threshold on the noise suppressor somewhat because even the slightest little bit will still take a little bit away of the effect of the delay pedals and possibly, I guess, essentially the reverb as well too. So go easy, go easy with the threshold, just get to where you like it. Um, and you may have to compensate on the output levels of those modulation effects, the reverb uh, and the delays. Give them, if, if you're at 10% normally, maybe bring them up to 12, 15 to compensate for the noise gate. But uh, the noise gate is probably one of my favorite pedals in the rig. It's funny, you talk to guitar players, a lot of times they don't want to spend the money on a noise gate or a tuner pedal because they're kind of boring. They really, what do they do? Especially the tuner. What? I guess looking at it this way, you know, if you're going to spend a hundred bucks on the pedal, um, really it's an invaluable pedal. The tuner especially, you're going to be in tune with your bandmates, you have to have it, it's, it's vital. 
Uh, the noise suppressor on an amplifier like this or any high gain amplifier, whether it's a Mesa Boogie or I don't care what it is, uh, that, that hiss from that gain that you get from these, from these amplifiers can be, can be much. I mean, it's nothing wrong with the amplifier. It's the nature of the technology but you want to have a noise gate. And um, I, picked, I particularly use the Boss product, the NS2. I like it a lot. And it does take away all that shh, it almost silence that. I mean, you can get a rate to it's like a solid clamp. So when you're not playing a note, it's there's no noise whatsoever. I don't particularly like that because sometimes you'll sustain a note. And uh, you know, if you've got your gate set too high, it's uh, stops and it's, it takes away that that feel. So you got it's a balancing act. You'll, you'll discover that as you play with it yourself. So the way everything's hooked up to the amplifier, whether it be the front or the back, I'm running uh, the Pedal Snake. Uh, you have to look them up online, pedalsnake.com, uh, one of the uh, products that I endorse. Uh, I love it. I, I, to me, I've always said this, it's as important to me as my guitar because I don't want to run a bunch of cables to the front of my, my board. I don't want power supplies at the front of my board because that will induce noise to your sound as well too. So the pedal snake is a series of DIN cables. I'll try to put a picture up on screen after it's easier than showing you here at the moment. But all your power stuff uh, stays up to your back line. So if you're you're up at the front of the stage, your amplifier is towards the back of the stage. All your power supplies and everything plug into the pedal snake at the back. They send voltage through the line and they even send send and returns. And you can even have extra lines for wireless. So technically, I have two voltage lines coming from my pedal snake at the back of the at the back of the rig. That's sending an eight, uh, nine volt uh, voltage for the traditional pedals. It also sends a second voltage line, which is 18 volt. And I only have one in this case, which is the EVH flanger. Um, it sends the 18 volt signal to that. So it's really, really cool. No, no pe uh, power supplies at my board. I have a uh, send and return that goes to the back of the amplifier through the pedal snake. And I also have my regular input. And I still have one channel left open if I want to use my wireless. I don't use wireless very often anymore. But if I do, I've got one uh, signal left on my pedal snake. You definitely have to check it out. They're pretty affordable. And I've had mine. I have a couple of them that they sent me. Uh, one's been a spare. And actually, I've never even had to go to the spare yet. I've had the original one for, I'm going to say, easily about eight years or more. And it gigged around, uh, around the country. And it took a beating. I've replaced a couple ends on it, maybe. Um, they give you all kinds of different ends for it, depending on what your configuration. And it's fantastic. And it also lets you get... Uh, further, further, like on big stages, if you got like a 30, 40, 50 foot deep stage, uh, you know, if you have that luxury of playing in that kind of stage, the pedal snake lets you get a little further, then you've got your 25 foot or your 20 foot guitar cord as well. So you've got some good signal run and uh, you're not losing any noise either, which is, or any, any signal, I should say. Um, again, it's really simple. Just uh, never, never, ever, ever run your distortions through your loop. If you have any of these multi effects uh, processors, the, the multi effects processors can be can be great through a loop if you're running like your your delays and things like that, maybe even some choruses. But never run anything that's going to have a huge gain boost through the loop. Uh, just not a good practice to do. Run those effects to the front. Um, lastly, uh, I'll t just touch base on the BBE Sonic Stomp. This was a pedal that was given to me. It was one I would have never bought in a million years because I just never never knew anybody playing with them. Whatever. It's given to me as a gift one time, so I thought, you know what, let's pop it on. And all it is is. More like on the, uh, if you remember some of the older 5150s, they had like a resonance control. And the resonance is uh, more of a low end presence. Uh, the BBE Sonic does that. It just basically tailors in that low end uh, presence, a resonance, and gives a little bit of thump to the, uh, to the amplifier. So I do recommend you check on one of those out. And in the description of this video, I'll try to put all the pedals I'm using here again. So uh, as far as the, uh, the setup, however, I hope I've answered some of the questions that people have had. And uh, this is got to be not going to be a performance video this time around, but if uh, you want to see some of these pedals in action on the next video, I'd be more than glad to, uh, to, to, to elaborate further on that. I mentioned a few moments ago too about the, uh, the new Guitar World magazine with Eddie on the cover, and, and it breaks down his, his settings with his guitars, his amps, his effects, everything. And it's funny, I commented the other day online to someone about this. I said, uh, you know, the 12-year-old me the younger version of me would have got that magazine and run right, right to the house and just started changing all the knobs on here right away. And the, the me of today, I, you know, I, I looked at those settings. I looked at them for sure. I'm not going to lie. I read them all verbatim all the way down, but I did not come in here and change anything because I know no matter what I change here to mimic Ed's, it's not going to sound like him no matter what. It's going to sound, it's going to sound like me. Um, and if I had one of you guys come over here and play through here, it's, you're probably going to get your sound of it because 
you are what you are. The sound that you make will be, you know, resonating from you. So that's why I didn't change that. And I mean, Ed sounds like Ed through a pick nose amplifier, through a little Fender, through a Fender Twin, through a Marshall, through through these. So uh, just get your sound where you like it. If you want to use a magazine and use his his settings to, to have some fun, hey, knock yourself out. Go ahead and do it. But um, just find a sound that works for you. Um, I tend to, uh, years ago, I used to use a lot of mids in my app. I mean, I, I would scoop my mids, sorry. I would scoop my mids right out until I had a sound guy one time give me some advice to say, put some mids in there. And I know Ed uses a lot of mids too. Uh, for most of my stuff, my mids are probably two o'clock. I'd have to even double check what that is with the magazine. Yeah, you guys can point it out with some comments down below. I'm not sure if that's where Ed is, but I, I do like lots of mids. I tend to roll off the bass a lot, not too, too much, but I don't like to crank as much as I used to. And the Sonic Stomp will uh, will kind of accent that now. Now that I'm locking mids on the, or the lows on the amplifier, the Sonic Stomp gives a nice little kick. So uh, I don't know, I'm probably rambling. It's uh, probably one of my first videos I've done in a long time as far as going through the setup, whatever, but uh, play it back and play it back again if there's anything I missed. Just uh, shoot me a comment down below. I would appreciate it if you'd uh, like and subscribe to me if you haven't already. And I promise to keep making more of these videos for you. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Cheers.